Welcome back to part three of getting the old Dodge out of the woods and back on the road. If you remember, we had to cut last week's video short due to an unfortunate event. Will we get it done this week? Well, I guess you'll just have to wait and see. It is Monday. I'm busy cleaning and repacking bearings this morning, shoving that hub full of grease. Well, I went to get my seals. You know, I ordered a couple of seals off of Amazon. They got here yesterday. Well, let me just show you. <laughs> let me show you what they sent me. If I had to guess, I'd say one of these. <laughs> one of these ain't gonna work. I believe it's gonna be that one right there. Yes, sir. That's what they sent me. Um. I'm going to send that back, and I'll try to find one somewhere. Um, it'll be another two or three days before we get one, if I can find one. So what's going to happen is I'll probably just go ahead and put that uh, drum back on so we can drive it out when the time comes. And then when I get a seal, well, we'll just have to pull it back off and put it on. Anyway, let me get this other done. We'll head back over to the truck. Well, we made it back to the old truck. It's a lot cooler today. It's still a little warm in the sun, but it ain't nowhere near what it was Saturday. No siree. Goodness, it was hot. Uh, got me a thermostat. Got both radiator hoses. We'll put them on in a little bit. Um, my pins came in for my the self-adjuster things on the back brakes. Well, I done drove one of them in. I got to get the shoe off that other side. Put it in and hopefully get these back brakes done. I want them done. But <laughs> let me tell you this. If my head wasn't attached to my shoulders, I'd forget it. Uh, remember how I got to make the back brake lines go, go across the rear end? Well, I forgot all about that. Uh, brake lines are at the house, so <laughs> I'll have to go back to the house to get the brake lines, make them, come back, put them on. Anyway, right now, let's get them brakes done. Well, the back brakes are done, finally, except the brake lines. You know, I still got to go make them. And I'm not putting the wheels on yet because it'll make it easier to bleed um, with them off. I think right now, let's put a thermostat in it, change both of these hoses, fill it up with watas, and might fire it up, let it run, and make sure that cured the overheating problem. I sure hope it does. Great, we got some more of these hall green clamps. My most favorite clamp in the whole wide world. Yes sir, these clamps need to be outlawed. That's about all I can tell you right there. Well, apparently, they don't give you a gasket with a thermostat anymore. Uh, back in the day, I could have swore every time I bought a thermostat, I got a gasket with it. Maybe that's just a Chevrolet thing. I don't know. Um, I don't have any RTV. I guess I took it out of that toolbox and put it at the one in the house. So I can't finish this. Uh, I think I'll change that bottom radiator hose. And then we'll run to the house and make the brake lines and get the uh, uh, RTV. Come back and... Well, I thought I had some 3 16 brake line, but I did not. I had to go to Ireland to get this. Uh, anyway, I got this in here bent. That's a pretty good representation of it. Here's a short one right here. I ain't gonna cut them off and flare until we get to the truck, cause you know, knowing my luck, they'll be about a half inch too short. <laughs> anyway, let's head to the truck and get them put on. Y'all look at them brake lines right there. That looks like it come from the factory, yes sir. Also, Groundhog, he brought me my wrench back. So that's awesome. Let's get up here, get some hoses and thermostats on, get some wooder in this thing. All right, let's get this thermostat in if I can figure out. There it is right there. I see it. 
Asa yun tungkol eh. Need some bolts. Where are my chanty locks? Where are my chanty locks? Alright, I'm only going to put water in it right now. You know, just in case it decides to boil again, I won't be losing a bunch of antifreeze. Once we see that it's going to be alright, I'll drain the water and put, put the antifreeze in it. Alright, it's full for now. Uh, We'll leave the cap off. Let me clean this area up and then we'll we'll fire it up and see what it does. I don't know if I told y'all or not, but this passenger side door here was stuck. Would not open. Well, watch this. Ta-da! Um I sprayed it with P and B blaster in here. A whole bunch. It finally broke loose. Um now why did I go from up here to this door? Now I'm going back up here. I don't know. I guess my nephew's right. I probably do have ADHD. Anyway, let's fire this thing up and see if it overheats now. Will she fire up? Well, she ain't gonna do nothing until the hook gets right cheered up. Alright, try it again. Alright, try it again. Interesting. I don't think that accelerator pump works very goodly. Let me get up here and see. Ooh. No, sir. Well, it's squirting a little, but not. It ain't very impressive. Try it again. I know some of y'all were complaining last video, asking why I don't use ether. I don't keep ether on hand, but I do have a lot of this, and I do use this. Maybe you just didn't see it. Starter man quit on us. Get out of the way. Get out of here. You son of a gun. Get on. Woo. <laughs> that was close. The sucker was all up in my face. As I was saying, I think a starter may quit on us. Let me take on it with a hammer. Oh, you sorry sucker. Well, I got the star tar off, got it tore apart, broke a bolt in the process. That's good. Well, I pulled the field windings off and little pieces of copper fell out of it. So that's, that's even better. 
Then I got to looking and, well, <laughs> it seems to have ate itself. Yes, sir. So that's, that's wonderful. I reckon we got to have a starter. I ain't going to get one today. I done been once. I ain't going again. So I think what we'll do, I'm going to uh, pour some brake fluid in the master cylinder, see if they'll gravity bleed. Whilst I wait on that, let's see if we can get the gas tank out. Well, the best thing to tell, this seat does not lay back, lay forward, whatever. So I'm going to try to take these two bolts right here loose and just take that whole back out. Let me see what that does. With well, the RTS, best I can tell, three or four bolts across the front. Got two on the bottom. Gotta get this line loose here. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. This will be the most aggravating thing right here. It'll have to come out that side over yonder. Anyway, let me get this out. Well, I do believe that this tank has seen better days. Yes, sir, I do. <laughs> it is. There's nothing left of the back of it. It sure ain't. I can stick my hand in it there. Um, I'll have to see if he wants to get a tank or if we're just going to stick us a five-gallon jug in the seat here and drive it home. Also, and oh, by the way, I ain't bleeding no brakes today because I forgot to bring my bench bleeding stuff here. So I think I'm going to call it a day. Tomorrow... Uh, well, I got I already ordered the starter. Hopefully, it'll be here tomorrow. We'll get the brakes bled and my seal, that wheel seal, it should be here. Hopefully, we can finish the brakes up, get them bled. This thing, it might come out of this hole tomorrow. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, we are back for what I'm hoping is the final day of working on this old truck right here. Will it come out of this hole today? I don't know, but I sure hope so. We still got a few things left to do. I reckon first thing we'll do is put this starter on right here. Look at this little feller. I know Chevrolet makes many starters. Apparently Chrysler does too. Um, it said it'll fit and work. So <laughs> we're going to put it on. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that that little bitty thing there is going to turn this thing over and start it. Let me get it on. Then we'll, we'll work on the next issue. Well, there the little feller is right down in there. Let me hook a battery up and uh, we'll see. Oh, crap. <laughs> If I trip on that thing one more time. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Let me get the battery hooked up and uh, we'll see if that stupid starter will work. All right, battery's hooked up. If I can find the button here, just right here in front of my face. Oh yeah. Anyway, let's see if the starter does anything. Oh yeah. Now let's see if it'll start. No, sir. Give her a little help. I don't know why it won't stay running right now. That's aggravating. Might have to check the timing. I didn't bring my timing light, of course, so <laughs> might have to go back to the house and get it. sit here and run for a little bit and warm up make sure that thermostat opens up we don't have any more overheating problems but i did take that thermostat home the old one I did take it home last night put it in boiling water and guess what it opened wide open so we may have a different issue as far as overheating the radiator may be stopped up block may be stopped up i don't know but i'm gonna let it sit here and warm up uh also the transmission's got me worried but i did a little studying on it and uh the 727s 
they don't pump when they're in park. And you remember the other day it ran 30 minutes in park. Well, I just went back here and jammed it in, in drive and reverse. And you know, of course it didn't move anything. Well, it didn't have time to get that fluid going. This thing been sitting here 35, 34 years. All the fluids probably drained to the pan. Uh, so it needs to pump a little bit, you know, hopefully that's the issue and get it get it all circulated through the transmission. So what I'm fixing to do here in a minute is go put it in neutral because it'll pump in anything but park. So put it in neutral, just leave it, let it pump, and then in a few minutes we'll we'll put it in drive reverse and see what it does. Well here's the deal. I turned it off as soon as it shut off. Well it puked some water out, but the temperature gauge was it was below halfway. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, fire it back up here in a little bit and see. But I checked, well I put the transmission in neutral for a few minutes, wasn't getting nothing. Well, you know, I checked it the other day and it was showing on the stick, it said add a pint. But I just realized that this thing was leaning this way. So it's gonna make fluid come up here to the dipstick. So I just put a jack under it, got her level and it ain't nothing showing. I brought a couple of quarts. I'm gonna put it in the transmission, see what it does. Hopefully, fingers crossed. That that's gonna fix the transmission as far as the coolant i don't know i don't know why it's doing that because like i said the gauge showed it running pretty cool anyway let me get some of this stuff done i'll be back all right let's put some transmission fluid in it sure hope that cures that well if the transmission don't work we've done all this work for nothing there's one Well, she's showing on the stick, but it still says add a pint, so let's put some more in it. All right, let me fire it up, put it in neutral, because that's where you're supposed to check it. And hopefully, we'll have some gears. Well, I just checked it, and it's still showing low, but it's, it's barely showing on the stick, so I'll have to go get some more transmission fluid. But let's just go around here and put it in gear see what it does. All right, here we go. Let's put her in drive. I didn't hear nothing. I ain't seeing nothing either. No, sir. Ain't looking good. Put it in reverse, see what it does. No, sir, this ain't good at all, fellas. <laughs> we ain't got no transmission. We're dead in the water. Well, I went to the Dollar Gentral. He got me some more transmission fluid, so I got three more quarts. Let me put all of it in there and <laughs> see what that does. Well, it says it's too full now, so that's good. <laughs> I'm going to fire it up, see what it does. Let's fire it up with the key this time, see what she does. Fires right up. Let's put her in gear, see what happens. I heard something. Oh, look at there. We got it now. Drive test is a turning. Oh, yeah. That drum's trying to turn a little bit. Oh, yes, sir. We got us a transmission. Look at there. We're doing 25 mile an hour sitting still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Clicking off the miles, too. Well, we got another problem. Yes, sir. I come up here and smoke was all in this area well then i saw some kind of liquid all over the hoses valve cover well look down here transmission line leaking like crazy yes sir it's a rubber line and it's a it's a made line it ain't just a hose with a hose clamp both of them look like they're leaking pretty sure ain't no part store gonna have that but let me look and see maybe i'll get lucky well, I'm up under the truck here. We can take these transmission lines loose as well. <laughs> that never self-deleted, yes, sir. I don't know if it's still attached, but it's awful rough looking. I'm going to get them off and go to town get some made because I don't, I don't want to risk it just looping them. It ain't my truck. If it's my truck, I'd probably do that just to get it home. But anyway, let me get them off there. Well, it's a couple hours later, and I'm finally back. Got me some new hoses right here. This has really knocked us in the head today and I'm pretty sure we ain't gonna drive it out of this hole today. No, sir. Um, let me get them hoses on. 
I need to fire it back up and check the fluid again because we lost a little bit due to the hose delete. And uh, after that, we might we might bleed some brakes. We'll just have to see. Well, it, it kind of helps uh, <laughs> when you tighten both fittings. I didn't even put, I didn't even hook that one up. I tell you, my brain is shot. <laughs> Let me fire it up and check your fluid. showing about halfway between add and full so we'll leave it there for now i'll check it again before we leave uh let's go put it in drive or neutral i mean drive or reverse well wait a minute apparently i already got it in gear that's awesome well i reckon it works um yeah we're doing about oh 12 mile an hour we're really getting on down the road we probably done put a mile or so on it too anyway we got us a transmission, that's awesome. Well, let me show y'all something real quick. If it ain't one thing, it's something else all a dead blame time. Watch the temperature. She keeps on a trucking, plumb out of sight. Yes, sir. I don't think it's hot though. Let me let me get out there and I'll show you why. Evidently I must have took my temperature gun out of my toolbox. It's at the house somewhere. But I got this little probe right here that you can stick into this meter here. Well, it's reading 176 degrees, and that's coming right out of the motor. Well, it's got a 180 degree thermostat, so that's, that's pretty doggone close. I think our sending unit's bad right here. So, I will get one of them tomorrow, but right now, we got a little bit of daylight left. Um, I wanna bleed these brakes. Let me show you how I'm gonna do it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We can't bleed no brakes yet. I gotta put my seal in this hub get it on just in case i accidentally step on the brake i don't want to blow those uh wheel cylinders out let me get that done real quick all right drums and hubs are on but that one they're spinning really freely because well i lost a piece to the self-adjuster uh i'll have to make it tomorrow but for now this will be good enough i can step on the pedal you know and see how they're doing um here is what i got to bleed it's motive products power bleeder Somebody gave me that a couple years ago. I put it on the shelf and just completely forgot about it. Basically, all you do is, it's got several different attachments for different master cylinders. This one here is a universal one. It seems to work on this and it'd probably work on the Chevrolet too. Um, you just, it's got J hooks with chain. You just tighten them down, that's what holds it in place. Then this here, you pump it up to 10 to 15 PS of eyes. Well, if I go to 15, it goes leaking. So I'm gonna leave around 10 or 12. And you put your brake fluid in here. You just pump it up like a pump-up sprayer and uh, just go to bleeding. So let me get it pumped up and we'll go back there on that corner and start bleeding them. Well, it's hard to do this and hold the camera at the same time, but um, yeah, you can see it. It's coming out. I got some air at first and now it's all fluid. No, wait a minute, there comes some air. Anyway, let me bleed them and then uh, I'll be back. Let me see if I can get you a better shot on this front one right here. Also know by the way, these bleeders, well, they're metric, yes sir. The hex is metric, just so you know. Well, oh, here we go. Got a bunch of air out, I heard it. We'll give it a second, see if the fluids will come out. Oh yeah, there it comes. Getting a little bit of air out. I'll let that run for a little bit and then the I'll be back. Well, I got them all bled. Went in there and mashed the pedal. And I could hear the spring squeaking here and back here on the back. Well, I walked around front and I got, a, I got a big old puddle right there. Apparently, we got us a rusted line across the front here. I think it runs under the radiator. Um, let me get under there and see where it's at. And then I'm probably going home because this right here is getting on my nerves today. I found it. I found it. Leaking like a sieve. 
Um, I reckon tomorrow we get to make a front brake line amongst other things. I'm going home, fully on this truck today. Well, there's the front line going over to the pasture side. Uh, I decided to go ahead and pull it out for a left. Um, right here is where the bad spot was, but I mean, it's all really rusty. I had to cut it in two. That's the only way to get it out and to go back in. I'll have to have a union here in the middle. Um, yeah. I'm not a fan of Dodge. I'm learning that slowly but surely. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow I guess we do brake lines. I'm going to do this one for sure. And may go ahead and do all the front ones. The, the driver's side is really short. It won't be nothing. And then the ones coming from the master cylinder down to the uh, proportion valve, I might go ahead and do them too because they're a little rusty too. Back one, I ain't going to worry about it right now. Uh, back brakes, they're just sort of a suggestion <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I'm going on. Well, we're back again working on this old junkie truck. Uh, I ain't even gonna say it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna say the opposite. This truck will not be <laughs> coming out of this hole today, no sir. Uh, let me tell you about my morning. I uh, went to O'Reilly's to pick up that temp sending unit and whilst I was there, I needed brake lines and some other stuff. Well, reached in my back pocket. Guess what? My wallet ain't there. Yes sir, I left it at the house. I never do that. That was odd. Well. To keep from having to go back home and then come back, uh, try to set up Google Pay. Well, that took me 20 or 30 minutes there. I hate technology. And whilst I was doing that, I had a nephew call me from Oklahoma, want me to help him troubleshoot a machine that I've never seen <laughs> through pictures, electrically troubleshooting at that. That that was interesting. But anyway, I think I got him on the right path where uh, he can get it figured out now, get it fixed. Well, after that. I had to go home and make my little adjuster piece that I lost for that breaker adjuster over there on the driver's side. Got that done. Well, I ended up bending my brake lines here. And now we're here. It is probably late afternoon, I guess you'd call it. And nah, this truck ain't coming out of this hole. <laughs> what I would like to do today, get the brake lines on, hopefully get the brakes bled. Cause you know, we've been working on the brakes about 16 years. Yes sir, I'd like to have them done. Anyway, get the brake lines on, get them bled, get the temp sensor changed, and I don't know, we ain't got a whole lot left to do, but we do have some stuff to do. Got to clean inside, got to get a fuel system rigged up. Uh, all that ain't going to happen today, but I can't get none of it done talking to y'all, so let me get busy and get under this truck. This right here, y'all, y'all allowed to hear me say some words that I shouldn't, because I got to go behind that motor mount. And well, it just it ain't gonna be fun. I can tell you that. Um, let's just see what we can get doing. Though. Are you kidding me? Huh? Well, that didn't take no effort at all to get that in there. That's pretty doggone awesome. Yes. Well, that's one half of it. I am shocked and amazed that it went in that easily. If you recall, I gotta put a union right here in the middle. But I wanna get that other side on first before I worry about that. So let me get that done. I have no clue what y'all can see. I got my camera leaned up on the stump right there. So if you ain't seeing much of nothing, well, I apologize. Uh, this in here. Let's see if we can get this little fella on up in here. I gotta bend you just a little bit. Then, now if I can get this started in that proportion valve, I may have this whoop. Well, that does not want to start for some reason. <laughs> Well, apparently, I put the wrong nut on the end of this line. That's just a wee bit too big. It should be this one right here. It's just a wee bit smaller. How I did that? I don't. How do I do anything that <laughs> I do? Anyway, let me get that cut off, reflared, and get that on. I'll be back when I get these brake lines done. Well, I got the brake lines on. I got my little union down there. I don't know if you can see it down there or not. Yeah, right there it is. Anyway, I got everything tightened up. Um, I said I was going to make these curly Q lines here too, but 
Upon further inspection, I don't I don't think I will. They're rusty, but they're not pitted. Normally, if your brake lines are pitted, well, you, 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 you better be prepared because they're probably going to bust. Those there, I don't see any pits. They're just rusty, so I think they'll be just fine. Uh, what I'm going to do next, put this adjuster on this brake down here. That's the part right there I had to make, that one right there. Anyway, let me put that on and get them adjusted, and uh, we'll pump that uh, bleeder up right there and bleed these brakes again. All right, let me get this here. Smell her back off the shear. Just like that right there. Ugh. All right, get over here and don't get in the dirt. Well, get over here and don't get in the dirt. How about that? All right, this goes something like that right there. This one. Look at that right there. Look at right there. Around here. You go in there. Come on now. It's hot. I ain't got time to fool with you. Then, this spring of Langa. It ain't doing right. What's going on? Then get this here spring. Get over there! Yeah. Alright. Now let me get this drum on there, get it adjusted. Then we'll pump that pumper up and lead the brakes again. I'm gonna add a little brake fluid to it. I'm gonna pump it up to about 12 PS of eyes. Then we'll go to bleeding the brakes again. Hopefully. All right, so we can get any air out of the passenger side. Oh yeah, whole bunch. Still get some air. Now we're getting some flared. All right, let's go to the other side. See what we get. All right, here's the driver's side. Well, there ain't no air coming through here. Uh, well, I guess it won't. Yeah, that's right. It was just the passenger side line that busted, so yes, sir, there won't be none over here. Uh, let's go in there and step on the pedal. This pedal was actually stuck the other day. I sprayed it with PMB Blaster, and it still don't want to come all the way up, but it's it's a lot better than it was. But let's see, we got a little pedal, yeah. I think we'll probably be okay. Yes, sir. I got to work on it, get it to return. But yeah, we got some pedal now. I think we'll be just fine and dandily there. Y'all remember that time I told you that, you know, I thought the brakes was going to treat me right? Well, I was wrong. Yes, sir. They starting to get on my nerves. See that puddle right there? Yes, sir. That's, that's brake fluid. That union is leaking, the one I just put on there. Well, I went to snug it up a little bit more, and it's actually split. The passenger side of it, it's split. Uh, junk. Chinese junk, I'm sure. Let me change it out for another one. Maybe it won't split. Maybe it won't leak anymore. Here's the bag of unions come in. See that right there? Made in China, I told y'all. <laughs> Let me go get it changed out. Well, I got the union changed out, and then I went in there and stomped that pedal about 15, 20 times really, really hard. Then I bled both sides again. I think it's safe to say that after about 17 days of brake work, <laughs> they're finally A-OK. -okay. Yes, there ain't no leaks no more. Uh, here is the union. Let's see if I can find the split place. Right there it is. See right there where my thumb is? And it messed the threads up on that side, so I had to cut it and put a new nut on it, reflare it. Well, that was all fun. Anyway, so we on the brakes, we're done with them. Let's move on to something else. All right, now we got the brakes done. Let me get this uh, bleeder off of here. I tell you what, this thing here is both handy and dandy. Let me tell you, yes, sir. That's my new best friend when it comes to brakes. I won't have to worry nobody no more when it comes time to bleeding them. Anyway, let me get this adapter off, and I think we'll go ahead and put the uh, temperature sending unit in. Fire it up, let it warm up, and make sure that's okay. And then, well, I don't know. We'll find something else to do. All right, let's get this temperature sending unit out of here. This is why I don't put antifreeze in an old motor that's been sitting a while, because... 
You don't know how many times you're gonna have to do something like this and lose antifreeze. Antifreeze is not cheap. Which I doubt I'll lose a lot changing this, but you know what I mean. All right, that's that. Let's fire it up, let it warm up. I bet it won't start without help from carb cleaner because that, that accelerator pump is pretty much junk. Might help if I hook this up first. Yes, sir. Well, I just fired it up. And as you can see, she's pegged out on hot already. Yes, sir. Um, I can unplug it and drop all the way to cold. That don't make any sense because the way it's acting, it acts like it's got a dead short somewhere. And unplugging it shouldn't make it drop to cold. Uh, I'll study on that. If you remember the danged old Dodge, yes, sir. It had a lot of wiring issues, too. This here is probably just like it. Y'all remember how I was wondering if it was actually charging, you know, because our voltage regulator on the firewall had all the goop coming out of it. Well, I'm checking voltage on the wire going to the temp sensor, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's charging. Look at there. It's getting about 13.8 voltages, so I think it's say okay I ain't going to worry about that regulator. Seems to be doing just fine. Well, I'm ohming out the old temp sensor. We're getting about 155 ohms. Ohmed out the new one over there, and it's a little under 19 ohms, so it's working. This and it's probably working. I'm going to say it's a bad gauge. Ain't nothing I can do about that right now. So we ain't gonna worry about that. Uh, I believe I'm gonna go to the house tomorrow. I'm gonna make a prediction. <laughs> that old truck's coming out of here tomorrow. Yes, sir, one way or the other. I've been needing to sharpen the chain on that chainsaw for <laughs> quite some time. And my file broke and I just ain't never went and got another one. I completely forgot about this little sharpener that daddy put on this pole right here. So we're gonna try it and see how it does. I've never used it before. I'm assuming I'm using it the right way. I don't know. Anyway, let me finish sharpening that and uh, we'll go back to the old Dodge and I might cut some of them big old stumps down in front of it. Well, it's been a few days since we worked on this old truck. If you've seen last week's video, well, you understand why. But I do believe today, this old truck's gonna come out of here. Still got a few things left to do. Gotta clean inside up, because it's pretty nasty. I ain't breathing all that crap flying around when I'm going down the road. Uh, need to cut these stumps down. Um, what else? Gotta get wheels and tires on it. Uh, gotta clear this brush pile out of my way that I put here the other day. Uh, I wanna see if that fuel pump will work. But we may not do that here. We may wait till I get it to the house. Uh, I ain't decided on that yet. But right now, I need to start on these stumps because, well, I got this conglomerate of stumps right in the way of putting this wheel on. So I think that's what we'll do first. All right, let's see how this thing will cut now that I have sharpened the chain on it. jack that wheel up or I'll hit it with that chainsaw. Ooh. It's too hot to be doing this. Way too hot. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
that was one of the sons of the fellow that owns this farm. He just stopped by seeing how it was going. Um, I think right now, let's just go ahead and get the tires and wheels on it. I got to go up just a hair. Y'all probably can't see it real good, but she does have tires and wheels now. Yes, sir. Them little, <laughs> them little tires there look kind of goofy on it. They're a little too small, but hey, at least it's got some on it. Uh, I can tell you right now, you can put some great big old fat tires here on the back. Yes, there's plenty of room for that. Anyway, I think what we're gonna do now, let's clean his bed out. He, uh, he want me to throw it all over here in this one. So I think that's what I'll do. Barrel's got stuff in it. Oh. I think I'll wait and bring in at the tailgate. No, it's it's falling apart there at the bottom. I need a bicycle. AMF Roadmaster. Ooh. Well, I got most of it cleaned out. Um, I forgot my battery at the house. It's in the dump truck. So when I go back and get it, I'm gonna get a shovel. We'll clean the rest of this mess because I don't I don't want that in my driveway at the house when I wash it out. Um I've been cleaning the inside out a little bit, getting all the mess off the dash. And well, here's all the little treasures that came off the dash. Got four, four ten shells as a twenty gauge. Several light bulbs. He must have had a light bulb issue in his truck. <laughs> Pair of scissors. Yes, sir. That's some kind of a. I don't know what you call it. Anyway, I'm on a. I brought my uh, generator and vacuum shop back. Back. I'm gonna vacuum this out because I don't want that blowing in my face. Anyway, after I do that, I reckon we'll probably go to the house and get the battery and the shovel. But let me do this real quick. With R she is, she is much, much cleaner than she was. Yes, sir. Maybe I won't be breathing in a bunch of whatever that was. I just vacuumed up. I did find some more rust. Pretty bad over in that floorboard, but it still ain't, bad. It ain't real bad. You know, considering how long it sit here. No, sir. Anyway, I'm thinking to put the seat on. And I got to go to the house, get the battery, get a shovel, shovel this out. And we'll be pretty much ready to get this thing out of here. Whilst I was vacuuming under the seat, my vacuum, it hooked onto this little plastic thing right here. I'm just now getting time to look through it. Well, let me show y'all. Um, this is this is pretty neat. You don't find this with a lot of old vehicles. This right here looks like a mini title. Uh, John Reading is the original buyer owner. 
4271, I guess, is when he bought it. Right here in Clarksville, Tennessee. Rossview Road, actually. This is the uh, some type of warranty information. Let me get it out real quick. Bob Bennett Dodge. See, that, which is before my time, but I don't remember a Bob Bennett Dodge here in Clarksville. But anyway, apparently there was. That's the warranty. Uh, customer care. What we got here? Fuel usage statement. I've never seen one of these. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it's just telling about uh, emissions and probably fuel mileage. Lead free, lead free or clear gasolines. Then over here, I already looked through this side. Uh, it's a bunch of old registrations. But this right here, you really just, you don't find it. Especially something that's been sitting in the woods for 34 years. This is the window sticker, fellas. Yes, sir, it sure is. It lists all the options. Bob Bennett Dodge, College Street, Final Assembly Point, Fenton, Missouri. Uh, this is this is pretty awesome here. Yes, sir. Let's just go down through the model D100. Um, 318, 210 horsepower, three speed load flight, window glass with glass and windows tinted. Well, they don't, they don't look tinted to me. Anyway, what else do we see here? Evaporative emissions. Cigar lighter radio. Bright front bumpers. Oh, yeah. Bumpers rear bright. Uh, exterior trim body. Seal molding. Trim wheel lip and seal mold. Horns dual. Oh, that's something I forgot to get working. I'll have to work on that here in a little bit. Wheel covers. Two-tone paint. 15 by 5 and a half, 5 stud. Wheels. Um... G78 by 15 tires, Goodyear tires, um, insulation package, oh yeah, automatic transmission special, undercoating, uh, tells the colors there, DT1263 and DT5163, white and orange, and destination charge with it included, he gave $3,563.22 for this truck in 1971, that, <laughs> This is an awesome find. It really is. I'll be sure to put this up and give it to to the owner. That's This is awesome right here. Anyway, I'm going to head to the house, get a battery in the show. I'll be back in a little bit. Well, I'm back with the battery. I'll tell you what. <laughs> if it sounds like I'm about to die, well, I am because it's about 1,000 degrees out here. I'm telling you, it's hot. Anyway, I'm back with the battery. I got it hooked up, brought my shovel, cleaned the bed out. It looks pretty good except for... It's rusted out right here, but I mean, you know, it sat here for 34 years with leaves and dirt in it. I'd expect a little bit of rust. Um, this tires went flat. That's one of the original front ones. Remember how it was kind of rough? Well, it went flat. I think I got a little compressor in my truck over. We'll see if we can get that pumped up. Oh, I cleaned the windshield too. Yes, sir. I can actually see where I'm going now. <laughs> Clean this brush pile up. We can drive through here now. Uh, there's one last thing I want to try before we take off in this truck. Well, actually, I forgot. I got to do something with the return spring on the throttle because it wants to hang a little bit. You got to put a stiffer spring on there. But right now, uh, I got a fuel system sort of rigged up. Here's the outlet from the fuel pump going into this jug. I got a line running down. You can see it going up the bed there. I got to go get my gasoline can. I'm going to stick that down in it. We'll fire it up and see if that fuel pump works. I, I hope it does because I don't want to have to leave this little tank sitting up here. Anyway, let me get the gas can and we'll fire it up and just see if that fuel pump works. All right, let's fire this thing up. See if that fuel pump's going to pump. Once again, it might help if we put the battery cables on. Yes, sir. It'll probably start after I do that. Y'all, what? Let me let me work on this return spring real quick, so I can use the gas pedal in there. Well, I had to do a little work on the linkage and spring, and the acceleratory device is a little stiff. 
and it wants to hold the throttle open just a little bit. So I took the return spring and moved it here. It was down here. Moved it up here, give it a little more leverage, and it closes now. But <laughs> I lost one of the clips, so I got it held together with a piece of wire. Hopefully it'll stay on. And then the kick down linkage here, the little pin's missing out of it, so I found me some copper wire, wrapped it around that, hopefully that'll hold. Anyway, let me get in and see if we're starting now. Now that I can use the accelerator pedal. Far in the hole. been sitting there idling for I don't know 10 minutes and as you can see we ain't got no fuel pump I even moved the tank on the ground there so it didn't have to lift so high going over the bed you know still ain't pumping uh spent a little time adjusting the carburetor it's idling a little better but still got a hesitation well let me just show you uh I have not checked the timing let me get my timing light check out real quick well, look here, fellas. I was over here trying to set the timing. I looked over here, we're pumping some gasoline. Oh, yeah. Uh, the timing, well, I can't see the marks. I'm going to shut it off and, and clean that up real quick. All right, I got my fuel line hooked up to the carburetor now. And I couldn't see my line over here on the flywheel. I ain't got no sandpaper. I ain't got nothing to mark with. So all I had was some uh, pipe dope. So I just filled the crack in there and wiped the excess off. Maybe I can see that. Let me fire it back up. Make sure it's going to run off of this. Make sure this don't leak. Set the timing. And then all we got to do is pump this tire up and hit the road. Well, that's showing about 10 degrees after. That's way too late. Let me loosen that distributor up and give it a little twist. Then I got the motor hot, and this is going to be hot. Hot on my hand. Something tells me this is going to be next to impossible to get broke free. I can't get on it with nothing, really. I got to get down. I'm burning up. fuel pump ain't working that's good <laughs> no sir she just quit on us awesome let me hook that other tank back up and now it acts like he wants to pump again buoy on him i got the gravity tank hooked back up i got the time in advance a little bit it's better it still got a little hesitation but it's better it was uh let me pump this tire up right here we're gonna get out of here well, as you can see, <laughs> it's decided to pump again. I don't, I don't know. I might hook it up here in a minute. Uh, let me get this tire pumped up real quick. Well, it's been sitting there idling for several minutes. So I guess the fuel pump's gonna act right now, but this itty bitty air compressor, it ain't gonna cut it. I'm gonna have to go home and get my air tank. Well, instead of going all the way back to my house, I borrowed this little air compressor right here. That's next on my list to get. Oh yeah, that's pretty handy. As soon as that tire's pumped up, I reckon it's time to get out of here. Well, I got the tire pumped up. She's leaking pretty bad, I can hear it. So I'm gonna bring that little air compressor with us. Uh, it's gonna be kind of difficult to get it out of here because I get that big stump. I gotta drive over with the back tire. Then this one over here, I gotta drive over this stump. After I get out of this hole, and then that back tire is in sort of a hole too. Uh, may have to do a little bit of rocking back and forth. I don't know, we'll just have to see. Anyway, 34 years later, fellas, she's coming out of her grave.
pressure wash the outside, clean it up. And uh, we have a few other things we might fool with once I get there. Showing a little too full. Tell you what, let's see what she'll do. Let me shut the hood. We're stuck.
keep doing this. So I reckon I'll see y'all if we make it to the house. Well, the old girl, she finally got us home, but I tell you what, I was beginning to wonder there for a little bit. That's weird, the way that transmission was doing. Turn it off, fire it back up, and it'll keep on trucking for a little bit and then quit. It sounds like a pump issue to me. Uh, I don't know if a fluid and filter change would help, but we might do that tomorrow. Uh, I tell you what, the old thing drives good. Rides good, brakes are good, it don't pull one way or the other. It's just a good old truck. Um, I think what we're going to do right now, I got the pressure washer out. We're going to fire it up. We're going to give the old girl a bath.
old girl cleaned up pretty good yes sir um i left the doors open all night so all that wooders could evaporate but i forgot to clean this side the jams i'll have to do that later yeah she looks she looks pretty good um got a little carried away right here knocked a little paint off but it just adds to the patina a little bit i think i studied for two hours last night researching transmissions and not one single person is having the trouble that we're having with this transmission basically resetting it turn it off turn it back on and it'll it'll go for a little bit i ain't got a clue on that the only thing i know to do is a fluid and filter change as you can see i already got the fluid and filter so uh, i reckon that's what we're gonna do but uh well let me tell you this real quick <laughs> uh for the last couple of months the shop it's it's ready to work in matter of fact i've been moving stuff in and you might see that next week but for the last couple of months i've had in my head which vehicle that we're going to work on first in that shop and i that's the vehicle i want to work on first and that's what it's going to be it ain't going to be this dodge no sir so we're going to change the fluid filter right here in the dirt and uh, well if it's crazy it's just crazy <laughs> anyway let me get it jacked up and get up under it and we'll change fluid also and oh by the way i've been meaning to do this for the last two or three videos asking y'all what what do you think i'm going to work on first in here put it down in the comments let me know The tarp is hot, very, very hot. All right, here we go, making the mess. The pan ain't big enough to cover the whole pan area. So I'm probably gonna make a mess. And I just really don't know why they never put uh, drain plugs on transmissions. I don't, I don't understand that. But anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna drain her. Well, what size are you, little buddy? Yeah, that size right there. What I'm hoping to see is a filter that stopped up. Here we go. I'm gonna make a mess. Let me move. Let's move stuff out of the way. All right, I'll let that drain. Then we'll pull that fan off. All right, let's get this pan off here. And hopefully we got a stocked up filter. Well, it's pretty nasty looking. It's it's actually coming apart. See that right there? That's part of the filter. Um, yeah, we might get lucky and that be the issue. Let me get it off of there and I gotta clean this pan up too. And then we'll put a new filter in it, put the pan on and fingers crossed. Well, I can't cross them because they're too fat. <laughs> fingers crossed that this, this fixes it. Well, here's a look up close at the filter in the pan. The filter, well, it it's feels like it's, you know, stopped up with gunk. I don't know. Maybe not. It feels like some of it's, you know, coming apart. And the pan, it's got metal in it. I ain't going to lie to you. And some clutch material. It, it may be shot, but uh, you know, i got to give it a try. Yes, sir. Let me get the pan cleaned up. Get back on, new filter. And we'll give her the old try, at least. Ooh, it's hot. Hot, hot, hot. All right, I got everything clean. So I reckon we'll put this filter on if I can remember which three holes it was. I think it went like this here, didn't it? Let us see. Well, there's one anyway. All right, we got the filter changed. Let's get the pan on, get us some fluids in it. See if this thing's gonna work or not. See what I'm gonna do. 
I'm gonna go put just a dab of RTV on this to make that gasket be steel. Alrighty, let's get this here pan on. Give me some bolts first. Get this here pan on. The driver's side floor pan looks pretty good. The uh, passenger side, yeah, not so much. <laughs> He's going to have a floor pan over there. Pretty doggone sure. All right, let me go around these one more time. And we'll let this fella down off the jack stands. Put some flurs in it. Y'all know what flirt is? Well, it's threatening to rain. Let me hair you up and get this full. And then, uh, this ain't level ground. I'll probably pull it over yonder and check it again. But let me put this in there. Maybe we'll at least move for us. Well, it just came a small flood. Yes, sir. Got everything very, very muddy. I did manage to get the flurds in it, though. Um, what I don't understand is online it said a fluid filter change You need about five to six quarts when well, I put four in it and it's it's that far above full. So <laughs> I don't know We are on a little hill, but not that much uh, Let me fire it up put it in neutral let it circulate and warm up I'll check it again and we got to find some level ground because this right here is not level Might get over there, but it's it's kind of muddy Anyway, I'll find a I'll find a flat spot well, I backed her out on the road, so obviously the transmission is working again. Check the fluid level. It's just a little bit below full. This is sort of level row, but not completely. Let's take her down the road and just see what she does. We'll find us another spot to check the fluid, too. All right, let's see what she'll do. Goes in gear aggressively, too, so that's a good sign. Oh, yeah. I think that's all she needed was a new filter. Horn's blowing. <laughs> Doing pretty good so far.
Well, I reckon a filter and fluid change is what it needed. Yes, sir, she's shifting just fine. It's actually got a very firm shift. When you're going from park to reverse or drive, she she, she goes on into gear. Yes, there ain't no hesitation at all. As um, far as the random misfire, I don't know. You know, it's got all new ignition with the exception of a condenser. I might get one to put on it, just see if it helps it out. Well, you gotta remember the thing sat there for 34 years. You know, it may have some valve issues, some rust around them causing a misfire. I mean, there's, there's no telling. But as far as I'm concerned, this old truck here, with the exception of needing a gas tank, it's ready to be back on the road. I'm telling you, it drives and rides and runs, shifts. Just, I mean, it's awesome. Yes, sir. I did do a little bit of research on the downshifting thing. And, you know, it did finally start downshifting. But from what I've read, these old transmissions, they ain't like the newer ones. Um, even just cruising, you drop down to, you know, 15, 20 mile an hour, it still stays in drive. That's just the way they are. I do think the old truck needs to be drove and all that stuff. You know, it'll start getting better. Yes, sir, I do believe so. Well, fellas, two weeks ago, this right here was surrounded by trees. It was in pretty rough shape. And now it's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's ready for the road. Needs a gas tank. But other than that, I would daily drive this truck if it was mine. Yes, sir. That's how good it runs and drives. Pretty awesome. Anyway, I appreciate y'all watching. hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blurp.